Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We'll just jump right into the program. Uh, we are so incredibly delighted to have you here joining us for the 19th annual Rwanda Prayer Banquet. Um, this, this annual event is an opportunity for us to rededicate our nation of Rwanda uh, to the Lord, and, and we just uh, want to gather as as uh, friends of Rwanda, as Rwandan nationals, uh, to, to celebrate our country, to, to pray together for our country, um, and to also to praise and worship the Lord and all the wonderful things he's done uh, for our country and for, for our people. Um, before I say too much, you know, we have the, the wonderful pleasure of uh, having Dale Dawson joining us uh, for, for the opening prayer. Um, many of you will remember Dale from his time uh, speaking at the 2018, 2019, sorry, uh, Rwanda Prayer Banquet. Uh, he's also an investment banker, entrepreneur, and founder, and most importantly to us, uh, the, the, excuse me, sorry, founder, uh, uh, chair, and CEO of Bridge to Rwanda, an amazing program, which if you haven't heard about it, I, I invite you to, to learn about Bridge to Rwanda and, and the wonderful things that it has done for many students uh, from Rwanda coming to the U.S. to study. Um, he, Dale also serves on the uh, Presidential Advisor Council of, uh, of our president, Paul Kagame. Um, but uh, without any further ado, I'd like to uh, pass it to Dale Dawson to, to do the opening prayer. Dale, are you online? Thank you, Tony. I'm um... I'm honored to have been a friend of Rwanda's for almost 20 years. So let's pray. Jesus, we know that you are with us, that your presence is seeps through this gathering. We want to thank you for Rwanda. Thank you for its generous people and its selfless leaders. Thank you for Rwanda's enduring spirit, a spirit that never gives up and has never lost its faith in you. We thank you for holding Rwanda in your hands and for shaping it into an instrument of transformation, an instrument that you can hold up for the world as a demonstration of your power and the power of forgiveness, reconciliation, unity, and hope. Lord, we know you have a plan for Rwanda, and if it is your will, we pray that Rwanda will continue to be a catalyst for change and progress in Africa, setting a new standard for peace integrity, order, and gracious hospitality, and rising as an international center of education, innovation, and entrepreneurship. Jesus, you know the pain and the disruption caused by the dark cloud of this deadly pandemic that has fallen across the whole earth for more than a year now. We pray that your spirit will comfort and care for those who are suffering and who have experienced great loss. And we pray that you will restore them and all of Rwanda, Africa, and the world to good health and a full and lasting recovery in this year, 2021. Lord, we know that despite as many challenges and obstacles, Rwanda will never be alone. In addition to your presence, love, and grace, you have surrounded this country with this country that we love with a special circle of friends and countrymen and women all around the world, a global fellowship of friends who hold Rwanda in their hearts and prayers and will stand by it in all seasons with encouragement and support. Jesus, for the 19th time, we gathered together today for this Rwanda prayer banquet to honor and praise you for the work of your hands in Rwanda. We rededicate the country of Rwanda and ourselves, its people, its leaders, and its global family of friends to love and serve you. We dedicate our lives to be an instrument in your hands and to make your will our purpose, to be and to do what you have required of us, to be a just nation where everyone, regardless of their station, is treated with respect and dignity that every human being deserves to be a merciful nation, to offer love, kindness, and compassion as we care for each other and our neighbors like we would for ourselves, and to be a nation that walks humbly with you, 
never forgetting that our future is in your hands, remembering that it is your spirit that throws open doors of opportunity, that casts visions that capture our imagination and gives us hope, that will raise up each new generation of talented, selfless leaders called to serve, and that strengthens us with the patience and persistence we need to run the race you have set before us. Jesus, we lift Rwanda up to you and ask that you continue to protect it, to use it, and to bless it with hope, wisdom, and strength. We pray this prayer in your holy name, Jesus. Amen. 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 That was beautiful. Thank you very much again, Dale Dawson. And, and I misspoke. Uh, Dale actually spoke last year at the 2020 Rwanda Prayer Banquet. Uh, 2020 was such a long year that it felt like two years ago. Um, we now would like to share a cultural dance video. I will, it seems that we're having some technical, technical difficulties. Uh, we had hoped to play a video of, of the Rwandan dancers, but it seems as though uh, the sound is not working. So we will uh, work on that. Um, and, and while we do, I also wanted to just uh, share a quick note in regards to logistics. Um, we are fortunate to have with us today a translator from English to, to French. Um, if you are lo logged in as a participant, you should see a globe at the bottom of your screen. And if once you click on that globe, you should have an option to select French so that uh, the entire program will be in English today, uh, but this will allow you to listen in and to hear the program in French. Um, so with that, uh, for those of you who have been longtime supporters of the Rwandan Prayer Banquet, we thank you for your commitment, for your uh, continual uh, uh, efforts to, to attend and to join uh, this event each year. Um, we owe the, the longevity and the success of this uh, event to our, our uh, lead organizer uh, and president of the Rwanda Prayer Banquet, Antoinette Kanyabutambo. So, um, I would like to introduce Antoinette to, to say a few words uh, to open up the event. Antoinette. Thank you, Tony. Thank you so much. Uh, you are all welcome here. Uh, Your Excellency Ambassador of Rwanda to the United States of America, Madame Mathilde Mukantavana. Your Excellency, Ambassador of Rwanda in Ghana, Dr. Aisa Kirabo Kakira, friend of Rwanda, Inshuti Zur Rwanda, chief among them, the keynote speaker, Pastor Rick Warren, Archbishop Laurent Banda, Rwanda speaker, Archbishop Darlington Johnson from the Harvest Intercontinental Ministry Unlimited, which is my pastor. All pastors represented here, fellow compatriots, ladies and gentlemen, you are all welcome. On behalf of Rwanda Prayer Banquet USA team, we welcome you to the 19th annual event. We are here today with the heart of thanksgiving, celebrating life first, the free oxygen received from the almighty God, the creator we know with coronavirus. Thank you so much for your precious time. We are not taking it for granted. Some of you may not know the story of Rwanda Prayer Banquet. In the early 2000s, we start meeting the Rwanda community of the District of Columbia, Virginia and Maryland. We were a small gathering to pray in a basement of the Warwick Building in Silver Spring, Maryland, in the reaction of 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. We believe that the power of prayer will transform the nation as the word of God say, if my people who are called by my name 
will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked way, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. This is Chronicle 7. As we grew, we began to gather at the Sheraton Silver Spring Hotel with the attendance of around 300 up to 500 guests from various nations. Reflecting last year, 2020, globally, as you know, we went through challenges of COVID-19, the loss of family members, unemployment, close of businesses, and much more. But we are alive today, praise God. We have seen the mighty hand of God despite the pandemic, the accomplishment made by our, by our country, the Rwanda, recently. Today, we are rededicating Rwanda to Almighty God through His Son Jesus Christ, praying for President Paul Kagame and his government for protection, wisdom, and guidance. We are praying for the future of Rwanda, the vision 2050, for a sustainable development to become a upper middle income economy by God's grace. We are praying for the country to continue applying godly values by fighting corruption and poverty, but aspiring to reach the middle income country MIC status by 2035 and high income countries HIC status by 2050. We are here as watchmen to intercede with thanksgiving for all people, kings and those in authority that we may live peacefully and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God, our savior, as you know what has happened here in America. Also, we pray for unity as Jesus commands Christians to love unconditionally in Matthew chapter five. You have heard that is, uh, Jesus was saying, you have heard that he was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who despisefully use you, persecute you, and you may be sons of your father in heaven, for he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and send rain on the just and on the unjust. Lastly, I invite Rwandan young leaders in diaspora to join the Rwanda Prayer Banquet USA. And we all need God for a better future. Instead of losing some of them and some of us in car accidents due to abuse of alcohol and drugs. I thank you all of you for your presence. Thank you, thank you so much for coming. Please write, put your name in the chat where you are from. There are some from uh, all over the places, the continents, Europe, Asia, America, Africa. Thank you. May God richly bless you all. Amen. Thank you, Antoinette. Uh, we really do appreciate your words. And then, yes, indeed, I'm reading uh, in the chat that we have uh, participants from North Dakota, uh, Maryland, California, Moscow, uh, Kigali, many people connecting from Kigali, Philadelphia. So we, we really do welcome you. And I, and I realize also that I failed to introduce myself. My name is uh, Mutoni Karasani. I'll be your uh, MC today. Um, and it is a real honor to be here with you. Thank you again for connecting and for joining this event. Um, we're super excited about the speakers we have for you today. Uh, but, but first, uh, I would like to ask Melissa Ano to join and, and just to 
uh, start us off with a, a small uh, gospel performance. Amen. Join me as we talk about the goodness of our God, how awesome he is. My God is awesome. He can move mountains, keep me in the valley, hide me from the rain. My God is awesome, heals me when I'm broken, strength where I've been weakened, forever he will reign. My God is awesome, 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 awesome. My God is awesome, awesome, awesome. Awesome, my God is awesome, Savior of the whole world, giver of salvation, by his stripes I am healed. My God is awesome, today I am forgiven, his grace is why I'm living. Praise his holy name. My God is awesome, 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 awesome. My God is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom power and love our God is an awesome God. Beautiful. Wow. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much, Melissa. Um, I've heard Melissa perform so many times. I think this time with no music and everything, you really appreciate the beauty of her voice. So thank you again. Uh, we're very fortunate to have, as I mentioned, three, uh, um, well, I should say several, many, many uh, high level speakers today that we're really excited about. Um, our first keynote speaker is, is Pastor Rick Warren, who many of you know. Um, and we are fortunate to have in our community, Eric Munyamana. Eric has been a past uh, speaker at, uh, at Rhonda Prayer Banquet, and he will uh, formally introduce uh, uh, Pastor Rick Warren. Um, so uh, without any further ado, Eric, are you there? Great. Yes, I am very much there. Can you hear me? Yes, and you look great too. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Uh, uh, it's a great privilege and a pleasure to introduce uh, Pastor Rick Warren uh, to everyone. Uh, so Reverend Dr. Warren, uh, as you can officially call him, although he likes to just be called Rick or Pastor Rick, there is a lot to say about him. And uh, if I go through everything I know about him or what people know about him, 
that may turn into a preaching and I'm not the preacher of today. So I'll do my best to say the best I know and what I know about him. Um, and I will introduce him uh, not as someone I have read about, but someone I have closely watched and walked by for over 15 years. What a privilege. Uh, so when you read his bio, there are things you will see and you will know. It's obvious. He's the senior pastor of Saddleback Church based in California with so many other campuses uh, in many places of the United States and uh, of the world. Um, and he's the author of the famous book that many of you have read, and including me, a book that has changed my life, A Purpose Driven Life. Uh, he's also the visionary and the founder of the Global Peace Plan, which is now thriving throughout every country of Africa and many countries in, in the different continents of the world. But that is after a national wide model uh, of the peace plan uh, was successfully launched and implemented in Rwanda from 2005 at Sarobak Church under Pastor Rick's uh, leadership uh, in partnership with the church leaders of Rwanda, the government leaders in the business, uh, and so that's when it was launched 15 years ago. And by the 2020, during COVID, when everything was shut down and everyone was locked in, the peace plan expanded to the remaining countries of Africa that now it has been launched in all 55 African nations under the leadership of Pastor Rick Warren. Uh, he's also the executive director of Finishing the Task, uh, which is a coalition uh, that desires to see that there is a Bible a believer, and the body of Christ in every unreached people uh, group and place in the world. He loves Rwanda so much. And he and uh, his wife, uh, Kay Warren, they oversee HIV and AIDS and orphan care initiative that has transformed the lives across the world and many other uh, initiatives that has impacted lives around the world, including Rwanda. He's been to Rwanda so many times that because it, you know when you keep going home, you'd stop counting. So you can't say how many times. And, we, and one of his favorite word when he, he, he arrives in Rwanda to show how much he just is a Rwandan. He says, Ndimurugo, that's his favorite word. So for those of you who met him in Rwanda when he's there, you are like to say Ndimurugo. And uh, yeah, he will tell us more about that. And um, yeah, so one of the things I also <laughs> know that's unique, you won't read in his bio, he remembers the names of the people he has met. When he's, uh, when he's in Kigali, for example, when he goes to the hotel where he checks in, he remembers the names of the waiters and the waitresses. So he always <laughs> remembers the names of the top leaders, and he remembers the names of people who have served him or who have been around him. That's an amazing, like so connected, so relational. Um, and uh, if you come at Saddleback Church, where he's leading, where he's based, Rwanda is featured in everything at Saddleback Church. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has used yeah. the model of Rwanda, the healing, the recovery, the leadership, every best practice of Rwanda to extract and share life transforming and top notch leadership teachings around the world. And uh, among the leaders of, he always, deal with leaders from what we call the three legs of this tool, the faith sector, the private sector, and the public sector. He never misses that integration, that synergy that brings holistic transformation of lives in a country. That's one of his favorite uh, audience. And he always has a biblical message that is doable, relevant, practical, cross-denominational, cross-generational, uh, to everyone in his audience. That's something I know about him that's unique. And uh, lastly, every place I've seen him or wherever his message has been shared, uh, it has always been like an edge and a catalyst of unity among diverse groups of people because they all want to hear what he says because he gets it from the word of God. And then they all want to apply it because you know, God's word is unifying. And uh, he, everyone here has it in their context. Uh, he's a passionate friend and believer in Rwandans and Africans in general. So ladies and gentlemen, please help me uh, welcome our own and beloved pastor, Reverend Dr. Rick Warren. Thank you. 
And uh, I say maraho to everyone. Maraho, maraho. Hello, everyone. It's so good to know that I'm with dear friends. I see the names of so many people that I love and respect. And it is always such a great honor to be with you, to be invited to speak to you at the annual Rwanda Prayer Banquet uh, here in the United States. You know that I love Rwanda. Have I told you lately that I love you? <laughs> I love you all. You're great friends, and I thank God for you. As most of you know, I've spent a lot of time in Rwanda over the past 16 years. I've sent our Saddleback Church members. I've sent members, literally uh, almost 30,000 of our members have been sent to 197 nations. Uh, but by far, we've sent more members to serve in Rwanda than any other nation, most other nations combined. Over 2,000 members of Saddleback Church have served uh, in some capacity in Rwanda. And as you know, I've got dual citizenship. So before I share the word uh, of God in this uh, prayer banquet, I I'd like to just say thanks uh, to dear friends who are leading this program. Ambassador Matilda, it's good to see you. I, I love you so much. Ambassador Aisa, I hear you're with us and I thank you. Uh, you. You both of you have been dear friends for so long. Archbishop Banda, Lauren, I love you. I thank God for you. You are co-worker in Christ, and I, I love you. Uh, Tony Mutoni Karasani, good to see you. Antoinette uh, Kanya Butembo, good to see you. Uh, Pastor Arsene Manzi, Pastor Rose Matabaro, uh, Pastor Asumpta Bayingana, uh, all of you, dear, dear, wonderful friends, I love you. Dale Dawson's on this call, I love you, Dale. And of course, Eric Munyamana, my uh, compatriot and, and co-worker and fellow uh, peace leader as he leads uh, the peace plan. First, uh, Eric led the peace plan in Rwanda. Then he became the leader of the peace plan all over the entire continent of Africa. And um, you may not know this, but now he leads it for uh, around the world. And we're working in South uh, America in which he's doing a whole lot there. Now, last year, our entire world faced what I call five major storms. We had what I call the global infirmity, the sickness, the global infirmity, which is the COVID-19 virus. We had the global infirmity. We had social instability, many, many countries, many, many nations. We had economic insecurity because millions of people were out of work due to COVID. We've had racial inequality here in the United States, which we are fighting for justice and equality. And we've had political incivility now, these are all five different storms that uh, as we come to prayer this year, uh, we know we've been battered by them. And I know you've heard people say, well, we're all in the same boat in these storms. But that's not true. That's not true. We're not all in the same boat. We're all in the same storm. We're all around the world facing the same storm, but we're in different boats. Some uh, people are going through this storm in a large yacht. And uh, if you have internet access and you can work from home uh, and you haven't lost your job, you're probably doing okay uh, with this. But uh, other people are in a rowboat and uh, that without paddles and they've lost their job and, and they're just barely getting by. And then some people are like in the ocean, just holding on the driftwood in the storm. Uh, they don't even have a place. I mean, how do you shelter at home if you're homeless? Now, there are actually two different pandemics that are going on right now around the world. There's the physical disease of COVID-19, the physical disease, but there's also the emotional dis-ease, the emotional dis-ease, the stress that uh, COVID-19 has called. And I am predicting in 2021 that there will be a tsunami of grief around the world because of all the things that were lost. Many people who never get COVID-19, who don't get the virus, have still lost a lot because of the virus. They may have lost their job, or they, they lost the privilege of being at a graduation, or watching their grandbaby be born, or, or, watch, or being at the funeral of their father, or they, they've lost a lot of different things that normally happen in life, gathering together at Christmas, things like that. And so wherever there's loss, there's grief. And it is our job as believers to comfort people in, in their grief. Now, today, what I want us to do at this 19th annual uh, 
Rwanda prayer banquet is I want us to think about leadership uh, in the storms of life. And specifically, I want to talk about the kind of leaders that we need uh, in our communities, in our churches, in our businesses, in our governments, and, and in our nation. And the reason I chose this theme, the kind of leaders that, that can be trusted, what are the characteristics of trusted leadership? And we're going to look at four of them. And the reason I want to talk about these, because the very fact that you're participating in this Rwanda prayer banquet indicates to me that you're a leader. So you should be interested in what are the qualities that cause people to respect you and trust you as, as a leader. You know, friends, over the past 40 years, uh, I've been training leaders. I've been had the privilege of coaching, training over a half a million leaders in 164 nations. And it has been my honor to advise and befriend many prime ministers and presidents and CEOs and other world leaders and leaders around the world. I've prayed at several of their inaugurations of prime ministers and presidents, including my dear friend, uh, President Paul Kagame. Uh, one of the fundamental facts of leadership is this. All leadership is built on trust. All leadership is built on trust. If people trust you, then they'll follow you. But if they don't trust you, they won't follow you. Uh, Paul Kagame is trusted, and he has a track record of being trusted. That's why people follow him. Uh, leadership is not simply a, a, a title. Leadership is not a position. You can have a position, you can have a title and still not be a leader. Leadership is influence. And if you want to know if you're a leader or not, just look behind you, <laughs> okay? Doesn't matter what your title is. If nobody's following you, guess what? You're not a leader. A, a leader has, by definition, followers. You're not a leader regardless of what, what you have. But uh, the way you get followers and the way you lead is through trust. Now, as I said, uh, all leadership's built on trust. But today, one of the problems is that today leadership are often leaders are not trusted or they're not respected. So I want us to look at the question of what does the Bible say about how do you earn the trust of others? How do you get people to trust you? How do you get them to respect you? And the Bible, particularly the book of Proverbs, has a lot to say about how you earn the trust and respect of others uh, in leadership. Now, I want to begin by reading three verses from the book of Proverbs uh, in the message paraphrase translation. Proverbs 20, 28 says this, love and truth form a good leader. Love and truth form a good leader. Sound leadership is founded on loving integrity. We'll come back to these verses in just a minute. Proverbs 22, verse 11 in the message says, God loves the pure-hearted and well-spoken. Good leaders also delight in their friendship. And so there's a purity of heart. Proverbs 28, verse 2 in the message, a very important verse for many, many places today around the world, says this. When a country is in chaos... Everybody has a plan to fix it, but it takes a leader of real understanding to straighten things out. It takes a leader of real understanding to straighten things out. Now, as I said, as I've trained and counseled and coached leaders around the world, God tells us that trust and respect is earned through four leadership qualities. These are the four qualities of trusted leaders, and here they are. Respected and trusted leaders lead with character, lead with conviction, lead with compassion, and lead with competence. Trusted leaders lead with character, conviction, compassion, and competence. I, I want to look in detail at each of these very quickly. First, the Bible says trusted leaders lead with character and they speak with integrity. Trusted leaders lead with character, and so they speak 
with integrity. We need leaders who don't shade the truth, who don't beat around the bush, who don't lie, who don't uh, 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 tell us things that are false. Integrity is the number one requirement of leadership. Integrity. It's more important than vision. Why? Because as I said earlier, leadership without trust means nobody's going to follow you. But all trust, listen, all trust is based on truth. If you tell the truth, people trust you. If you lie, people don't trust you. That's why integrity is the first quality of trusted leadership. Trusted leaders lead with character and they speak with integrity. Proverbs 17, verse 7 says, respected people do not tell lies. And one of the benefits of always telling the truth is that it gives you personal confidence because you don't have to remember who you lied to. If you told one person one thing and told somebody else something else, then you have the stress of always having to remember, what did I tell them? But if you tell the truth to everyone, you don't have to have a good memory. Proverbs 10, verse 9 says, uh, the man of integrity walks securely. When you find an insecure person, it's often because they're being dishonest and they don't want people to see the real them. They don't want to see. Integrity is, is more than honesty. Yes, it includes honesty, but integrity means wholeness. It means what you see is what you get. It means I'm exactly what I appear to be, that I act the same with the Queen of England as I do with my grandchildren uh, as I do with a stranger on the street, as I do with members of our church, that I'm not, I don't wear a mask. You know, it, thousands of years ago in ancient Greece, the uh, play actors in a play, when they would put on a theater and put on a, a play, actors, one actor would often play several roles and they would come out with a mask, holding a mask, and they would play one role in the play and, the, and then they'd go back, change masks, come out, and play a, a, another person. And then they'd go back and change masks, and come back and, and play another role. And so they were different roles and different uh, masks. The Greek word for that person is hypocritos. Hypocritos. It's what we get the English word hypocrite from. You're always wearing a mask. Integrity means you don't divide up your life into segments and say, this is my social life, this is my church life. This is my business life. This is my government life. Uh, and, and you act different ways in different ways. Integrity is not a slice of the cake. It's the whole cake. It's not a slice of the pie. It's the whole pie. And so if I want to be trusted, I have to tell the truth. And that means trusted leaders lead with character and speak with integrity. Why? Why is a, a man or a woman secure if they have integrity? because they have nothing to hide. Now, number two, not only do trusted leaders lead with character and speak with integrity, trusted leaders lead with conviction and they serve with intensity. Trusted leaders, if you wanna be trusted, if you wanna be respected as a leader, you have to lead with conviction and serve with intensity. That means you give it whatever you've got because you believe in what you believe in. Do you know the difference between a conviction and an opinion? A, a conviction is something, uh, you, an, an opinion is something you'll argue about, but a conviction is something you die for. Right or wrong for good or bad, if you study history, you will discover that the people who made the greatest impact on the world, right or wrong for good or bad, were those, they weren't the smartest, they weren't the best educated, they weren't the wealthiest. They weren't even also always the most talented. But the people who changed the world had the deepest convictions. They believed what they believed with intensity, and they served with intensity, and they, they knew what they were willing to die for. Do you know what you're willing to die for? What are you willing to die for? You're not really ready to live until you know what, you read, what you're willing to die for, until you know the answer to that question. Now, trusted leaders lead with conviction and they serve with intensity. A lot of people work with intensity, but they're not serving others. They're not working for good. They're not serving, they're just working with intensity. You serve with intensity. Proverbs 14, 22 from the Bible says this. 
you will earn the trust and respect of others if you work for good. If you work for good. As I said, a lot of people work hard. They don't work for good. A lot of people work hard for selfish reasons. They work out of competition. They work out of jealousy. They work out of greed. They work hard out of resentment or anger. They work out of a desire for applause or fame. The Bible doesn't say just hard work will succeed. It says if you work for good, then you'll have trust and respect. I have a good friend of mine uh, named David Beasley, who was, was a governor here in America. And it, I took him with me to India uh, as I was training about 22,000 uh, poor pastors in India during a week. And God really gave him a heart for the poor. And he decided that he was going to have a conviction that he had to do something to help the poor. It became a conviction in his life. And as a result of that, God opened the door. And today, David Beasley, my good friend, who is an ambassador for the peace plan, uh, is the head of the United Nations World Food Program, which is the largest program of the United Nations. It's an $8 billion a year project that saves the lives of hundreds of thousands of people every year by providing food. And David uh, not only speaks with integrity and has character, but he serves with intensity through his conviction. And this last month or two months ago in December, my friend David won the Nobel Peace Prize. Why? Because he serves with intensity. He serves with intensity. You know, I'm, I'm a student of great leaders. I've studied them all my life. I've studied it for 40 years. One of the principles of great leadership is what I call the Mother Teresa syndrome. And the Mother Teresa syndrome is this. The more you care about those who have nothing, the more moral authority and impact you'll have with those who have everything. I'll say it again. The Mother Teresa syndrome, which she proved, is that the more you care about those who have nothing, the least of these, the left out, the lost, the, 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 the least noticed, the marginalized, the more you care about those who have nothing, the more impact you will have with those who have everything. And Mother Teresa once said, you know, it's not what we do that matters, but how much love we put into it. And so don't look for a great job. Make your job great. And how do you make it great? By putting love into it. How much love you put into it. That's a principle of leadership. Another principle of trusted leadership is I, that I've discovered is that there are no automatically great people. You're not born great. There are no naturally great people. There are only ordinary people who commit themselves to serving a great purpose. And when you serve a great purpose, it draws greatness out of you. Ordinary people become great people when they serve a great purpose. And they become great in doing that. We all need a cause greater than ourselves to pull us out of ourselves, to give us a reason to get out of bed. You're not a big enough reason to just get out of bed for yourself. Uh, we, we need a cause bigger, a purpose bigger than ourselves. If you haven't read Purpose Driven Life, I'd encourage you to read that book. Jesus said, if you want to be great, you have, to, you have to learn to be the servant of all. You have to learn to be the servant of all. The more you serve, the greater you serve, the greater you become. So the Bible says trusted leaders lead with character and speak with integrity and lead with conviction and serve with intensity. Here's the third quality of trusted leadership. Number three, trusted leaders lead with compassion and they share with generosity. Trusted leaders lead with compassion and share with generosity. Speak with integrity, serve with intensity, share with generosity. I'm sure you've noticed that we only build statues to honor people who spent their lives giving themselves away, people who gave their lives away. We build statue to honor givers. We never build a statue. No one builds a statue to honor a taker whose whole purpose in life is to make more money, get more things, 
have more of themselves and live for themselves. We don't honor them. We honor givers, not takers in life. Well, what does that have to do with love? You spell love in English, G-I-V-E. God so loved the world that he gave, okay? You can, you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. Generosity is the expression of love. And the more you learn to love people, the more generous you will become. Giving is the essence of love. As I said, love is giving. And if you have no generosity in your heart, that's the worst kind of heart trouble. So speak with integrity, serve with intensity, share with generosity. The more generous you become, the greater leader you will become. Finally, the Bible tells us that trusted leaders lead with competence and they succeed with humility. They lead with competence and they succeed with humility. They lead with character, speak with integrity, lead with compassion, share with generosity, lead with conviction, serve with intensity, but they lead with competence. They're skilled. And then because of those skills, they succeed, but they succeed with humility. I mentioned uh, earlier, Psalm 78, verse 72, but let me read it. Uh, Psalm 78, 72 says this, David, uh, this is about the most famous leader in all of Israel, King David. David led them with integrity of heart, and he guided them with skillful hands. He, he, he led them with integrity of heart and guided them with skillful hands. Now, in that one verse, we see both competence and character. Character, he led them with integrity. Competence, he guided them with skillful hands. When you get those two together, great character and great competence, you have a great leader. Now, how do you develop how do you develop competence? How do you become more skilled? Well, there's only one way, by repetition, by practice, by developing good habits. You are the sum total of your habits. If you have good habits, you'll have good character. If you have bad habits, you'll have bad character. Habits are simply doing the same thing over and over every day. And every day, if you're developing good habits, you're becoming better in character and better in competence because you get more skilled and you get more character the more you do something. So your habits are your character. Now, here's a question. If you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. And I want you to think about it all this next year, 2021. What do I need to do today in order to become what I want to be tomorrow? What do I need to do today that I need to, what do I need to do today to become what I want to be tomorrow? What habit do I need to start today? Let me suggest one habit that will help restore your soul because I know you're all tired from this uh, coronavirus and from the, the um, being combined, uh, being confined and not able to do everything we want to do like this. We're not able to meet together and, and we miss each other. I, I want you to start a habit that I've practiced every day for this entire pandemic. And it's called HWFW, HWLW. His word, first word, and his word, last word. His word, first word, his word, last word. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go get a Bible, uh, get a Bible in a translation that you really like reading, a modern translation that you could read or in Kenya Rondon. And I want you to put it by your bedside and I want you to open it and leave it open. Never close it. Now, here's why. A closed Bible is easier to ignore. But if a Bible is open, it's easier to pick up. So you open it and you pick a book that you want to read through that book. One of the Gospels, Psalms, Proverbs, one of the letters of Paul, Philippians. Just pick a book, okay? And then here's what you do. You leave it open. When you wake up in the morning, before you even get out of bed, you, you don't even get out of bed. You sit on the side of your bed. You don't look at your phone first. You don't look at social media first. 
You don't turn on the radio first. You don't turn on TV news first. His word, first word. You fill your mind with the truth. Studies have shown that the first five minutes of your day tend to set your attitude for that day. And you want to fill it with good news, not bad news. So you open, you leave your Bible open, and then you start reading. How long do you read? It doesn't matter. You read until something speaks to you. Either something comforts you or something challenges you. Both of them will feed your soul. And once you read something that challenges you, you stop. You stop. And then you just think about that. You might only read one verse. Go, whoa, I need to think about that verse today. You might read five verses. You might read a chapter. It's not a set amount. You read until God says something to you, comforting or challenging. And then when you get that verse, you stop. Now, I want to encourage you to read the Bible slowly and read the Bible aloud. Because if you read the Bible aloud and pause between each phrase, you will get far more than if you read it fast. You're not trying to read it fast. You're not trying to read the amount. You're just trying to read slow and, and read it aloud and listen to the word. Once you find something uh, that has spoken to you, as I said, you stop and you think about it. I will often memorize, as I just did the other day, Psalm 94, verse 18, which says, when I was filled with uh, um, uh, worries, when worries filled my soul, your consolations cheer me up. When my life was overwhelmed with cares, your worries, I mean, your, your consolations cheer my soul. Now, what I would say to you is you leave it open. Then you get up at nighttime when you come back to bed. The last thing you do is his word, last word. And you pick up that Bible and you start where you started, left off. And you just read. It may be one verse, five verses, ten verses, a chapter. But you read until something speaks to you. You can underline it, circle it, whatever. And then you go to bed thinking of that verse. That habit, his word, first word, his word, last word, was something that will calm you. It will challenge you. It will uh, correct you. And it will help you grow in character and in competence and in, in compassion and all of these, these things. So these are the things. Lead with confidence, but then succeed with humility. Now, when you've got true character and true competence as a leader, you don't let success go to your head. You succeed with humility. Proverbs 29, 23 says, Arrogance will bring your downfall, but if you're humble, you will be respected. Did you know that the English word humor and, and humility both come from the same root word? Humor and humility actually go together. If you learn to laugh at yourself, uh, you'll never run out of material. And the problem today for most Christians is we take ourselves too seriously and don't take God seriously enough. What we need to do is the, op uh, uh, the opposite, is we need to take God more seriously and don't take ourselves uh, so seriously. Most people misunderstand what humility is. Humility is not denying your strengths. That's dishonest. Humility is not putting yourself down. That's destructive. Humility is not denying your strengths. It's admitting your weaknesses. It's expecting to make mistakes. That's humility. It's being teachable and being correctable and apologizing when you make a mistake. That's humility. All of us are a bundle of strengths and weaknesses. I, I know that you have some great strengths. You also have some great weaknesses. You're both. I have some great strengths. I also have some great weaknesses. And just ask my wife and kids and grandkids and my staff. The bottom line is we're a bundle of both. Humility is not denying your strengths. It's being honest about your weaknesses. It's not thinking less of yourself. It's just not thinking of yourself. You're thinking of other people. Proverbs 18, 12, proud people will be ruined, but the humble will be honored. Proverbs 15, 33, respect for the Lord will teach you wisdom. And if you want to be honored, you must be humble. You see, it's ironic that we think that the way we earn respect is going out there trying to impress people. But actually, when you go out and try to impress people, people just think you're a jerk. The, the prideful people are a pain. On the other hand, 
humble people are respected. People say, I like that guy. I like that girl. I like that woman. She's a woman of God. He's a man of God. They're humble. Now, how do you spot a humble person? And I'll wrap it up with these. Well, you watch how they handle compliments and applause. Proverbs 27, 21 says, praise is the test of character. It's the test of character. You know, human beings, the only creature, when you pat them on the bat, their head, head gets bigger. Uh, every time you are complimented, every time somebody applauds you, God is saying, this is a test. How are you going to handle it? Stay humble or you'll stumble. All right. Remember the lesson of the whale. When you get to the top and you're ready to blow, that's when they harpoon you. You know, my life verse is Acts 13, 36 in the Bible. It says, David served God's purpose in his generation. Then he died. I, I can't think of a better thing to have people say about you at your, at your death and at your funeral and at your burial. I'd love to have that phrase on my tombstone. He served God's purpose in his generation. Then he died. You can't serve God's purpose in anybody else's generation. You can only do it in yours. But you do that which never changes in a world that's constantly changing. You do that which is timeless, but you do it in a timely way. You serve God's purpose, which is eternal, but you do it in your generation. You do it in a relevant, timely, contemporary way. What do you want to be ruined for? As I end this challenged you on our uh, National Rwanda Prayer Banquet. What do you want to be remembered for? You know, I sent an email to my friend, Paul Kagami, last night, and I told him what I was going to teach on, because I told him that I, uh, that I was going to mention him, that he, as I know, as long as I've known President Paul Kagami, he has modeled these four qualities. He speaks with integrity. He serves with intensity. He shares with generosity, and he succeeds with humility. What Rwanda needs is more leaders like that. Leaders of character and conviction and compassion and competence. My prayer for our country of Rwanda is that our number one export, our number one export will be leaders, leadership, not just to the continent of Africa, but all around the world. Leaders of conviction and character and competence and compassion. So this is my challenge to you. Will you commit to be a leader who leads with character and speak with integrity? Will you commit to be a leader of com conviction and you'll serve with intensity? Will you commit to be a leader of compassion and share with generosity? And will you be a leader with competence and succeed with humility because you develop good habits. That kind of leader not only honors God with your life and not only helps the most people, it, it, it is a life that is Christ-like. So may God bless you and may God continue to bless Rwanda. Let me pray a prayer of blessing. Thank you. Father, I wanna pray for all of the leaders of Rwanda. I pray first of all for President and uh, Mrs. Kagami, Dear friends, I thank you for their leadership. I thank you for their courage, their conviction, their competence, their compassion. I thank you that, that they are a man and woman of character. And, and I thank you for other leaders like that in, in our nation, uh, in our world. I thank you for leaders who stand for the truth, who are not afraid to be courageous, who are not afraid to be compassionate, show emotion, who are not afraid uh, to, to serve with intensity and conviction. I want to thank you for the leaders that planned this prayer banquet. Lord, we love them, and we know they love you, and we ask your blessing on them. We pray that you will bless all the government leaders of Rwanda. We pray that you will bless all of the business leaders of Rwanda. We pray that you will bless all the, the spiritual leaders of Rwanda, the pastors, the priests, the church leaders uh, who love you and they're serving you. And we pray that there would be unity and harmony uh, as we speak the truth in love to each other. And that it, it would be a nation where trust grows greater every day. 
and that the number one export of Rwanda would become be trusted leadership. I pray this blessing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And everybody said, amen. God bless you, everybody. Amen. Amen. Wow. What a beautiful uh, speech. What a beautiful prayer. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Rick Warren, for, for blessing us. Um, you know, as he was speaking, I was thinking, do I have to speak after him? But, but you know, let me serve with intensity as your MC and, and not uh, shy away from my duty just because of uh, what a great speaker Pastor Rick Warren is. Um, we wanted to share a couple of quick points uh, for logistics. One, if you are in the chat, uh, please make sure to use the drop down and find where it says all panelists and attendees. I noticed that there are many comments that are being shared with the entire group, but, but you're, you're clicking on all panelists. And so I wanna make sure that all, I think we're over 130, I'm not sure Melissa might have the correct number, but I believe we're over 130 people joined from all around the world. We've had people who have uh, written in the chat about connecting from California, North Dakota, Maryland, um, Moscow, Russia, Kigali, Rwanda. So, so please do share also uh, uh, where you're connecting from. We'd love to, to hear uh, all the wonderful places that everyone is connecting from. Um, and, and for everyone that you know uh, has been blessed as I was blessed by Pastor Rick Warren's uh, sermon just now, I hope that you are taking notes. I hope that you walked away with uh, uh, some lessons there about how to, to serve with character, conviction, compassion, and competence. Uh, but as we sit and reflect on these words that we've just heard, uh, we wanted to play uh, a quick uh, song for you by Pastor Arsene Manzi. This video was uh, recorded uh, specifically for this event uh, um, by a pastor in Rwanda. And uh, we will play that video now. Thank you again for joining and please enjoy this song.
Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Manzi. That was a beautiful song. Um, so Pastor Rick Warren gave us a challenge. He, he says that he wants uh, the Rwanda's number one export to be leaders. And I'm excited to introduce uh, a friend, a family, a strong family friend who's a leader in everything that she does, uh, Shiba Hakiza, um, who will introduce our, our next speaker, Bishop Mbanda. Um, so Shiba, if you're there, please uh, take the floor. Yes, hello. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. I am, my, uh, my video needs to be turned on. Okay. All right, well, thank you, Tony. Um, it's definitely a pleasure to be able to be a part of such an incredible um, celebration of our God and to be able to be in the commune of, of people of God. I'm not sure if um, if everyone can if it's can see me or not, uh, but I'm not able to turn on the video there. Um, but um, let me uh, do the great honor of introducing a man of God. Um, the Reverend Dr. Lorette Mbanda lived in the United States for 21 years um, before moving back to Rwanda. He was consecrated. Bishop of the Diocese of Shira in, in March of 2010. He was elected the fourth Archbishop and Primate of the Anglican Church of Rwanda and Bishop of the Metropolitan Diocese of Gasabo in, Mar in 2018. Mbanda is heavily involved in the Anglican Commune and currently serves as the Vice Chair of Global Anglican Future Conference a trustee and grantor of Global Fellowship of Confessing Anglicans. He is married to Chantal Mambaleo, father of three children and one grandchild. Archbishop Mbanda has traveled, lived, and served in many countries. He served with Compassion International for 18 years, where he has where he held several positions in the organization, including vice president for African Region and Vice President of International Program Development. He has served on several nonprofit organization boards, including serving as Vice Chairman of the Global Board of Directors for Compassion International, Chairman for Food for the Hungry, Board Member of International Justice Mission, Opportunity International, and chaired the Board of Kigali of Education in, in Rwanda. Currently, he is Chairman of the Peace Plan Rwanda and Vice Chair of Rwanda Interfaith Council. It is my great pleasure and honor to introduce Archbishop Reverend Dr. Lorette Mbanda. My name is Laurent Banda. It is a privilege to be with you today, joining you all the way from the land of a thousand here, Murgua Gasavo. It is a privilege to be able to speak to you today. And as we speak and share the word of God, let us pray together. Our gracious Father, you are an amazing God. You are a loving God. You are a caring God. You are a God who joins us from all over the world. You are a God who gives us opportunity to share from our hearts, to listen to your word. May your Holy Spirit use it to bless each one of us and to bless our country of Rwanda. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. What a privilege. It is a privilege to be able to be the speaker and have this opportunity to be with you at this banquet, the ninth annual Rwandan prayer banquet. Thank you so much for choosing this passage that you have chosen and the theme that goes with it. Let me give greetings to the ambassador, a friend. Thank you for being our voice. I also want to greet my friend Rick Warren and all of you who are in this banquet for today. May the Lord bless you. It is a privilege, as I said, to be able to be with you and to share with you the word of God that God has put on my heart today, though the theme was given to me. 
We are speaking from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah was the 8th century prophet after whom this book of Isaiah is named. Isaiah saw a vision. He also prophesied the coming of Jesus Christ. He is the man who said, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust him and not be afraid. These are wonderful words. But for the purpose of our theme today, let me point out that Isaiah is focusing us to the end of the exile. He turns his full attention to the new ideal era where he talks about salvation, where he talked for nations, where he talked about the exceptional glory of Jerusalem, where he calls for prayer and practical obedience. He provides a challenge for the watchmen to do their job until Jerusalem is restored, until people are established, until peace is established until security is established and a good economy. When we are talking about the establishment of people, we are talking about peace, we are talking about security, we are talking about economy, we are talking about new levels of living standards. God's, so that God's name can be praised. Until then, the challenge is on to keep watching. Let me tell you something. I will add something for the sake of where we are, for the sake of the country we are in, that even when established, even when the city is restored, even when we are protected, and even when we are well guarded and cared for, we still have to safeguard the achievement of things that we have done, where we have invested our time, our talent, and our efforts. Allow me to brag a little bit. Our country is a beautiful country. You who are Rwandans and friends of Rwanda and people in diaspora who travel in and out, who have known this country, you will agree with me that our country is a beautiful country of Rwanda. So that you can understand what to watch for, what to guard, what to pray for, what to, to safeguard in terms of its achievement. Let me break a little bit. Rwanda, your country, my country, is a stunning, beautiful country intimately known as Rwagasavo, or the land of a thousand years, or the country of roaring hills. It is a country that is considered one of the cleanest and safest country in Africa. It is a country that has experienced an amazing growth in tourism. It is a country that has achieved impressive development gains since 1994. I used to work with a, with a non-profit organization in areas of development, and many times we would try to measure and look at the indexes of development and the indexes of different things to kind of somehow be able to rank a country in certain categories and fears. Rwanda has enjoyed a political stability. It has enjoyed an amazing economic boom that has risen up to 10% plus before the COVID pandemic. Rwanda and Rwandans have enjoyed a new level of living standard that has improved significantly. A country that is aspiring to reach middle economy by 2035. Let me encourage you. Come home, those who can and who are ready, 
invest in this country, encourage friends to invest. You want to be part of the success that is going on and the success stories that are being told in this beautiful land of ours. All these and more need the watching, need guarding, need pleading to the Lord to continue to bless our country of Rwanda and other nations by extension. Blessing the people of Rwanda is to keep our leaders strong, pray that our leaders will be kept strong, that they will have the spirit of discernment on daily-to-day -day decisions that they have to make. Isaiah 62. It is about salvation. It is about restoration of Jerusalem. It is about God's promise of restoration to come. It is about fulfillment of his promises to his people. It is about God's goodness. And when we are talking about God's goodness, we are talking about God's provisions. We are talking about God's pro protection. We are talking about God's forgiveness. It is about God's goodness for peace. It is about God's goodness for security. It is about God's goodness for prosperity of his people. Let us read this beautiful theme that you have chosen and I will read for you. It says, I have set watchmen on your wars, O Rwanda. This O Rwanda has been repressed before it was saying Jerusalem, but let us claim it for now. I have set watchmen on your wars, O Rwanda. They shall never hold their peace day and night. You who make mention of the Lord, do not keep silent and give him no rest until he establishes and until he makes our nation a praise in the earth. My goodness, Isaiah 62, 6 to 7, that is the theme. Those are the verses. Let me read them in a, in a different version so that you understand the meaning of these words. Isaiah 62, 6. I have posted, I like that word, posted, over the word set. I have posted, watchmen, on your words, O Rwanda. They will never be silent, day or night. You who call on the Lord, give yourself no rest. And give him no rest until he establishes Rwanda, since we said, O oh, Rwanda, and makes her the praise of the earth, the praise of the nations. The Lord makes some promises that are worthy looking into. Let me enumerate them for you. The first one, I will not keep silent. Now imagine these people, the Israelites, who had been in captivity in Babylon, who have suffered injustice, who had suffered the exile, and he says, I will not keep silent anymore. Promise number two, I will vindicate you. Promise number three, your glory will be seen by the king. It is almost like I will raise you up. You will be called a new name. You will be given a new name. Another way of saying a new identity, a new status, a new destiny. You will be a crown of a stranger. Oh my goodness. This is so beautiful. You will enjoy the fruits of your hard labor. Never again will I give you grains as food for your enemies, and never again will foreigners drink the new wine. I think this is a promise of prosperity. I think this is a, 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 a promise that people will be healthy and will be wealth. Now, my friends, remember these are people who for years, almost 70 years, 
had felt like God had kept silent on them. They had felt like God had abandoned them. They suffered an exile that seemed to go forever and ever. Now, let me tell you, many Rwandans and people who have known the Rwandans know what it is to suffer, know what it is to be in exile, know what it is to sometime know your rights and not be able to claim them because you get suppressed. They know the abandonment of what happens when a genocide against the Tutsi happened and where the world watched without coming to rescue. People who have suffered, when you say I will not keep silent, they can hear you. When you say I will vindicate you, they can hear you. And this is why. When you look at verse 6 and you look at verse 7, to these who had felt abandoned, to these who had suffered an exile, God comes to them with an uplifting message. And he says, take me serious. I will commission, I will appoint watchmen. This time it is like God is saying, enough is enough. It is my time to come in, to intervene, and I'm going to use people who obey me and trust me. I'm going to use leaders in the government. I'm trying to use leaders in the private sector. I'm going to use leaders in the religious sector. I'm going to use believers, you and me, as watchmen. Isaiah and his words are challenging to you and to me. We are challenged to keep watch, to do our parts. Historically, Israel had many enemies. The city of Jerusalem had thick, high walls around the entire city. In fact, many olden day cities had walls around them for protection. There are some nice examples in the scripture about watchmen and their roles. In Hebrews 13, verse 17, it says, Obey your leaders, your leaders, and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your soul. In Acts 20, verse 28, it says, Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock. It is a challenge for spiritual leaders to guard their own spiritual and moral purity. It is a challenge for you to guard your spiritual life. In Psalm 127, verse 1, Unless the Lord builds a house, without the Lord's help, all our efforts are useless. In Psalm 121, verse 4 to 5, Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep, who he keeps Rwanda will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The Lord says, I have set watchmen on your walls, O Rwanda, whose task is to engage in constant prayer, in service, to testify to the glory of God, to testify to what God has done for the people of Rwanda, for this country, wherever you may be, and even to the friends, those who love us, those who support us, those who have been with us. Those watchmen are to continue their responsibility non-stop until he establishes and until he makes our nation a praise in the earth. Until he makes our nation a blessing to the other nations a blessing to the people of Rwanda, a blessing to the surrounding countries in the Great Lakes region, 
a blessing to those who come our way, our friends, and those who visit this beautiful country. What an awesome responsibility for you and me, for our leaders in different sectors, for the diaspora, for the friends of Rwanda, to be called, to be challenged, to be the watchman for this country. It is about the concern for the people. It is about the concern for the country. It is about the concern for the nations. Watchmen, commissioned, appointed. Are you a Christian? If you are, you are commissioned. Are you a leader? If you are, you are commissioned. Are you a friend of Rwanda? If you are, you are commissioned. Are you a diaspora? If you are, you are commissioned. Are you a citizen of Rwanda? And if you are, you are commissioned. Commissioned are you ministers of the gospel for the proclamation of the good news for people to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ we are encouraged to pray without ceasing. We are encouraged to testify the goodness of God. We are encouraged to care for God's grace, goodness, and mercy, being a voice for the voiceless. To what end? For the fulfillment of God's promises, for the gospel proclamation for salvation of people, for the protection of the people and the country, for the healing, for the provisions, for the restoration of broken homes, for total reconciliation of the people of Rwanda, for transformation and the making us a blessing to other nations, to a new name, to being his delight to people who love and cherish our beautiful country, the land of a thousand years and millions of smiles. Let me come to the conclusion, almost summing up this sermon or this presentation, this encouragement of being watchmen of our country, of our nation, with these words. He, words from Hebrews 10, 22 to 25. They say, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, without hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, and the body is washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and to do good works, encouraging one another and all the more as you see the days drawing near. These verses, these words, call for serious thinking about other Christians without a purpose to, without, with a purpose to stir them up in love and service, to strengthen each other in faith and living like followers of Jesus Christ so that others may know him and desire to come to him and be blessed. The Lord has posted watchmen over our nation, over our country. I like what St. Augustine said. I desire, I desire to always be found praying or preaching. My brothers and sisters, Rwandans, wherever you may be and you are, pray for this nation. Testify to the goodness of God of what he has done for us. Steer each other, encourage one another to love and to do good works. May the Lord bless you and all of this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Blessings to you all. Amen. Join me to pray for this country of Rwanda, to pray for Rwandans all over, and to pray for our friends, to pray for this pandemic, COVID-19. Let us pray. Our gracious Father, you are loving God, you care for us, and we come together as Rwandans from all over and friends of Rwanda, those in diaspora, those in this country, to pray, Father, for our country of Rwanda, 
to pray for our president, Paul Kagame. We pray, Father, that you will give him wisdom. We pray that you will give him a spirit of discernment. We pray that you will strengthen him, Lord. We pray that you will bless him and his family as he continues to lead this country of Rwanda. We pray for those who help him in the different levels of the government. May you bless them, Father. May you protect them. May you guide them. We pray for Rwandans all over the world, wherever they may be. We pray for the friends of Rwanda, Father, that you will bless them. We pray for the openness of this country and the opening of our arms to those that come our way. May you bless them with us, Father. We want to pray for our Rwandan families, families that are broken. We pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit will minister to the people. We pray for the families that are doing well, that, Lord, you will use them for the encouragement and the reaching to the others. We pray for our children throughout the whole country, some in school, others not in school. We pray for this pandemic, the COVID-19. Lord, that in your own power, in your own way, that you will intervene for this country, but also that you will intervene for the whole world. May the vaccines that have been made, Lord, find their way to the arms of the people. May the distribution of these vaccines go according to your will. Father, we pray for the people without jobs, for the people without means, that you will provide for them. We pray for the economy of this country and the economies of the countries around us and the economies of the world. Father, that you will bless us, that you will bless this country, that you will bless the families, that you will bless the people who are working hard, that you provide for their needs, that you will give them food on their table. Lord, in your power, we pray that you will bless each one of us where we are. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding continue to guard our hearts and our minds so that we may draw closer to you, Father, to love you and to love your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, God the Son, the Holy Spirit, be with us all, be with this banquet, be with the people that are involved, be with the organizers, be with this country of Rwanda now and forever. Amen. 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 What powerful words. Indeed, we are all commissioned. Thank you, Archbishop Mbanda. That was uh, such an amazing speech. Thank you for uh, praying for the nation of Rwanda. Uh, uh, and, I, and I want to echo uh, Pastor Rick Warren's comment. Wow, 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 wow. Uh, that was really, really amazing. So thank you, uh, uh, Bishop Mbanda. Um, so we, we, and I love that the two uh, keynote speakers really connected in their speeches that we are all commissioned and, and that our, our, our goal should be to have Rwanda's number one exports uh, to, be, to, to be leaders. Um, in this next uh, part of our program, we're gonna be praying for the country of Rwanda, for the nation of Rwanda. And we have three wonderful speakers, uh, Dr. Ambassador As Dr. Aisa Chirabo Kachira, uh, Pastor Rose Mataboro, uh, Pastor Asamta Bayangana. Um, so I won't have a chance to introduce each of them separately, but, but I wanted to at least introduce our, our first speaker properly. Uh, many of you have heard uh, the Ambassador Dr. Aisa uh, Chirabo Kachira speak at our uh, past Rwanda Prayer Banquet events. Um, but, but just to, to quickly shed some insights into how she has already begun to live uh, uh, Pastor Rick Warren's challenge to us uh, as in terms of uh, exporting leaders. She has been an elected member of parliament, a former mayor of Kigali, a governor of the Eastern Providence uh, before leaving the nation of Rwanda to become uh, the former UN Assistant Secretary General of and Deputy Executive Director of UN Habitat. And she is now currently serving the nation of Rwanda as ambassador of Rwanda to Ghana. So it is a real delight and pleasure to have uh, 
I've said the name five times now, <laughs> Ambassador Dr. Dr. Aisa Chirabo uh, Kachira with us today. Um, so Dr. Aisa, if you could please uh, join us and, and start us off uh, with the prayer for Rwanda. And uh, once she concludes, Pastor Rose will speak. And after Pastor Rose, Pastor Asanta will speak. Thank you. I can only assume that it was my poorly botched introduction that is uh, uh, the result of the delay. Uh, so, so while we uh, sort out the technical difficulty for having uh, Ambassador Dr. Issa Tarabo speak, um, may I please ask uh, Pastor Rose uh, Mataboro to, to please uh, begin the, the rededication. Thank you. Thank you. Let's pray, we're gonna pray for families, we're gonna pray for marriages, and we're going to pray for uh, the youth of Rwanda. The word of God says in the book of Ephesians chapter three, verse 14 to 15, that for this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. And the book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4 says, Marriage is honorable among all, and the bed undefiled. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord, and we pray, we, we, we pray for families, Lord. We pray for, for marriages. We pray, we know, Lord, that in your perfect will is that family stays in unity. Lord, we pray for unity in family. We pray for harmony in family between husbands and wife, between parents and children, Lord. We, 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 we pray that you bring that communication between, hallelujah, the, 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 the husbands and the wife, the parent and the children in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless marriages. Lord, we come against the spirit of divorce in the mighty name of Jesus. That everything that is, that is broken, you put it back together in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you that you give, we ask you that you give more wisdom. Lord, you give more wisdom to wives, more wisdom to husbands, more wisdom to parents, Lord in the mighty name of Jesus, that the husband will take his place as the head of the home and the wife will take her place, hallelujah, and the children will respect their parents and the parents will do whatever is, is they need to do for their children in the name of Jesus. And we know that your perfect will is for you to bring, to, 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 to raise strong family in Rwanda. That's why we commit every family, not only the family in the country of Rwanda, but every Rwandan family all over the world in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak unity. We speak harmony. We speak the presence of the Holy Spirit. We speak, hallelujah, that you bring love, true love, true understanding, true communication in the mighty name of Jesus. And we commit the youth we commit the youth of Rwanda into your hand, Lord. As you say in your word in the book of Psalm chapter 144, verse 12, you say, may our son flourish in the youth like well-nurtured plants. May our daughters be like graceful pillars carved to a beautify, uh, to beautify a palace, Lord. We commit into your hands the young adults, the youth and the children, hallelujah. Lord, there is a pandemic that is worse than coronavirus. There is pandemic that is that is destroying our youth. There, there is addiction, Lord, all kind of addiction. There is child molestation, Lord. We commit, Lord, our young people into your hand, Lord. We speak protection over them, hallelujah. We, we come against every every spirit that is trying to destroy their future in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you protect our children, Lord. Uh, the, as parents, we cannot be with our children 24-7, but your Holy Spirit, Lord, will be everywhere at the same time, Lord. That's why we speak protection. That's why we speak hallelujah 
That's why we speak uh, uh, protection. That's why we raise a hedge of protection around our youth, around our sons, around our daughters in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. We know that, hallelujah, in this end time armies, Lord, you will use them in a mighty way. That's why we protect their destiny, Lord. We protect uh, these sons and daughters that you brought into our families, Lord, that you will do what we cannot do, that you will protect them, that they will grow to be mighty men and women of God in the name of Jesus. We thank you for everything, Lord. We cover, Lord, families in the blood of Jesus. We cover marriages in the blood of Jesus. We cover children, Lord, young adults, and every youth in the blood of Jesus. And we thank you for everything. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray and say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. <clears throat> I'm now available. Sorry for the mishap. I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Yes, can I go ahead? Please, Without Dr. Please. Issa. Thank you very much. Um, uh, please just briefly allow me to really thank um, Antoinette and my sister, um, Matilda, for inviting me. I really feel so blessed to be part of this, of this team. So. Um, Thank you so much. Let's humble ourselves um, under the mighty arm of God and continue to pray. Our dear loving Father, we come here before you in humility with our hearts full of praise. We deeply thank you for the purpose-driven servant leadership that you've given Rwanda at a time such as this. Lord, we thank you that through our leaders, working closely with Rwandans and the great network of friends of Rwanda, that you have brought us this far and helped us make tough but the right choices and decisions in facing crises such as this COVID crisis and the many other challenges we've gone that have come before us. Father, we thank you that you've continued to guide our leadership in love, to serve and support, especially the least and vulnerable as we move ahead. Lord, we thank you that you've continued to build. Lord, we thank you that you have continued to build trust and unity between the ordinary Rwandans and our leaders. Father, we thank you today that you've again given us this opportunity to remind us that we, you have set watchmen on our walls and that we as believers, when we humble ourselves, surrender our will and limited human understanding and know that you are God. <laughs> that Lord, <laughs> that Lord, in your goodness and wisdom, since you sent us your son, Jesus Christ, to save us, you will enable our leaders to have and continue to build the right character, conviction, competence, compassion, and humility. Father, we bring to you our leaders, His Excellency, the President of Rwanda, His Excellency Paul Kagame, our First Lady, and their family, we bring to you all arms of government leaders and their families, the executive, legislature, and judiciary, the leaders in the corporate sector, the private sector, Father. We bring to you leaders in our civil society, especially the church, Lord. We bring to you our local government leaders, our community representatives. And Father, we bring to you our diplomatic our community leaders who are representing us. Specifically, I bring to you my sister, Ambassador Matilda and her team and the leadership of their diaspora community, Father. Lord, we come to you, please teach us, teach us your word. Help us as we've learned, Father, to wake up with it and end our day with it. Lord, may your word continue to be the light to guide us in what we do. Father, refresh us with your spirit as you promised in Joel. 
please pour out your spirit in abundance on all the leaders of Rwanda so that our dreams and visions will be according to your will. Father, this Thursday, we met with the U.S. again. Thank you, Father. We had this U.S. prayer breakfast where we prayed for His Excellency President Joe Biden and the Vice President Kamala Harris with the leadership of this great country, the U.S., as they continue to forge. And we, Father, we pray that they continue to build the unity, reconciliation in truth and love. Lord, we pray that you continue to further strengthen our friendship and collaboration between the government and the people of Rwanda and the U.S. That, Father, that which you have sown in us, that we can only sow and reap when we work together as a family, that, Father, you help us to do it. Lord, we know that we continue every day to face global challenges, pandemics, climate change, terrorism, all forms of division and hatred. May we continue as leaders, Father, to unite first with you as our Father and, our father and guide and amongst ourselves and between us and those that we lead. Father, we pray that we continue to remember that everything good and lasting begins with you. Help us to continue to honor you, worship you, trust and obey you as our anchor in our lives. Lord, we pray that we continue as leaders to see our significance in the way we allow you to use us to transform the lives of those that we serve. Father, we pray that you help our leaders to continue to come to you every day with contrite, humble and broken hearts like David, seeking for your wisdom, Father, for healing and strength. May we as women, having been given the opportunities to serve as leaders, Father, first of all, every day, to first come to you falling on our knees in prayer and fasting before we go to confront our enemies within and without. Father, we bring to you our young leaders that we are nurturing as parents and as leaders. Father, we ask you, like Joseph, that they never lose hope in their dreams and that, Father, they continue to trust in you, always overcoming evil with good. We thank you, Lord, for listening to us for we know, as your word says, that even before we utter a word, you know it, and you'll give everything that we need to us. You'll fulfill the desires of our hearts, and that your love, its depth and height and width, is far much greater than we can ever fathom. We thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, have we prayed. Amen. Amen. We are praying for the nation of Rwanda. We are rededicating our nation once again. And uh, we are praying protection against COVID-19 wars and any other calamities. We are standing in a word of God in Psalms uh, 33, 33 verse 12. And we speak it um, on our nation, blessed is a nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his own inheritance. We are calling upon our God, knowing and trusting that we are, he's our father and we are his beloved. And we stand in Psalms 60 verse five, that your beloved may be delivered. Save with your right hand and hear me hear us, Rwandans and friends of Rwanda, as we rededicate our nation to you. Father God, we humble ourselves before you. We thank you that you have loved us as your children, as Rwandans, as friends of Rwanda. We thank you that you have raised our nation from the pit, 
to a place that is praising your name, that uh, mm -hmm. your, our nation is bringing praise to, to the world because of your mighty hand. We mm -hmm. thank you for each and every um, action you have done in our nation. We thank you for the great leadership you have given to us, oh God. So we are rededicating our nation to you, that once again, Lord, you do what you only can do. That is beyond our, our imagination and our thinking as God. You do it abundantly, exceeding mm -hmm. as our Lord. We pray that, Lord, your protection will be um, upon us, that uh, especially against this time, um, especially against this a period of pandemic, Lord, that all ones mm -hmm. will be protected. We speak healing over those who are in the hospital. Mm -hmm. We speak healing over those who are sick and not even know it, God, that they will mm -hmm. not uh, spread it around. So we pray that, you, Lord, as this pandemic has taken so much from uh, your people, that, Lord, you who can make a way where there seems to be no way, you who can, uh, who has fed uh, manna to the people in the wilderness that you provide, that your people will not lack. We pray that you meet the needs according to your riches and glory. Lord, we pray safety around our borders. We pray that your, your um, fire will uh, surround us in the north, in the south, in the west, in the east of the country, God, that there will be peace among our neighboring countries, that there will be harmony among our neighboring countries, that we will see great unity in the countries of the Great Lakes, oh God. So I pray that, Lord, your powerful hand, right hand, mighty hand, will be upon each Rwandan family, whether in a country or in a diaspora. I pray even for our our friends who have taken their time to bring the good news to us. Pastor Rick Warren, even our own um, Archbishop Banda, that everyone who is here, God, that your protection will be on your people, that we continue to see your um, great works, that every word you have spoken uh, upon our country shall be fulfilled, that because we know and trust that you are not a man, that you lie, you are a God, and your word always comes to be fulfilled. Thank you for this time. We praise you for what you have done and that you are going to do because you are a faithful God. Blessed be your name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Asunta. Thank you, Pastor Rose. And thank you, Dr. Isa, uh, for those powerful words. Um, I think we can just take a moment to let those words sink in. Family, friends, participants, uh, thank you so much for being here for this you know, very important annual event that we have. Um, this part of rededicating the nation and rededication, rededicating Rwanda to the Lord is, is a key part of why we organize this event and why we come together every year. Um, we're also very thankful that each and every year we've had the consistent and unwavering love and support of our, our wonderful ambassador, Her Excellency uh, Mathilde Mukantalana. Who, who requires no introduction uh, for all of us in uh, the DMV uh, or in, in anywhere in the US, uh, know her well. We know her, her charm, her, her love for the country of Rwanda and her support for all Rwandans in, in North America um, uh, in the diaspora. So, so we are really honored and truly blessed to have Her Excellency here with us today. Um, you know, I can read very quickly that, as you know, she's the uh, ambassador of the Republic of Rwanda to the United States of America, as well as the ambassador to Mexico, Brazil, and Argentina. 
Um, and, and as I mentioned, she's been a remarkable supporter of, of our organization, the Rwanda Prayer Banquet, as well as uh, to diaspora throughout, uh, throughout, throughout the world, really. Um, so without any further ado, we'd like to, we would love to hear from you, uh, Ambassador Mathilde, uh, if you could please uh, take the floor. Thank you. Murakoze cyane mutoni reka ntangire mu kinyarwanda cyacu mvuge ngo muraho mwaramutse abandi mwiriwe ndese mbifurije umwaka mushya mwiza uzababera uwamata nubuki muzahahe muronke imana y'u Rwanda ibarinde mu byo mukora byose nabanyu bose I really would like to express my gratitude for being with you again today as you convene for the annual Rwandan prayer banquet this is and has been a wonderful forum to share our fellowship, to further strength, uh, strengthen our relationships. So I, let me start by thanking you for uh, the organizers, particularly Madame Antoinette Kanya Utembo and your committee who have brought us together time after time, rain or shine, for the last 19 years to pray for our leaders, to pray for our nation. There's a saying in Ichinyarwanda that Rwanda Rufitiman, we are indeed blessed. Even today, under the current circumstances and challenges caused by COVID-19, to curtail you from organizing this far-reaching event, you still did it. We are here. I'm especially elated and deeply appreciative by the amazing people who have spoken before me. Thank you so much, Pastor Rick Warren for your edifying speech, your sermon. You know, it builds us up. Uh, I, as you were praying, I felt this energy I haven't really felt in a long time. Thank you for the whole team from Saddleback that has been supportive of this event for quite some time now. Uh, you know, for almost four years, you have been a constant presence as we have been uh, coming together. I also thank our Archbishop Rorambanda, our friend from Rwanda and your amazing speech. Uh, you, you've taught us about Rwanda and there are many things I was going to speak about, but you did it, it better than what I could ever do. I thank Derry Dawson for his love and support for Rwanda and also take this opportunity as a matter of fact, to congratulate him because he has become officially Rwandan. You were Rwandan before, but now you are official. So congratulations and welcome. I thank my sister colleague, Ambassador Aisa Chirabo, who took the time to pray for us. Yesterday, as she was mentioning, she was also at the breakfast prayer for United States of America, in which we pray for all the leaders of the world, but also for this country. That is our host country. So I thank uh, all the people who are here from, you know, you came from Ghana, you are praying for us, so we thank you. I thank you for all the people of God who are praying for us today. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, the pastors, the, the, the people in this room, this is what brings us together and you are really responding to the theme of the uh, Rwanda Prayer Banquet of 2021. I have set the watchmen on your walls and I'm not going to pretend to try to talk to the theme because the previous speakers have done it and better than I can ever do. But one thing I can say is that the challenging times that have tested us as people over and over again, if anything, have also magnified the importance of faith, of unity, of resilience, and hope for the future. So this forum, that is bringing all the people together is, is an example of that. We have seen Rwandans and their friends mobilizing and putting their resources to tend to the most vulnerable among us. We have seen this forum walking the talk and using prayers to lead the action in assisting those in need. I call on you to continue to be the beacon of hope for all of us. To achieve that, it's all of us, young, old, poor, rich, uh, rich races, all races, regions, to have a unity of purpose. And this forum is the beginning of it. It expands, it multiplies. As we pray for Rwanda, 
let me ask for all of us to pray, to really continue the journey that the, our country has embarked on. We are standing as a country because our leaders and the people of Rwanda have embarked on unity. The unity is at the center of what we do, we do as a nation. And unity is what is bringing us here together to pray for each other. So that unity has to be mirrored and mirrored through our lives as we live in the diaspora and beyond. Friends, let's not just pray, but let's us live by faith. Let's live the faith. Let's love others. Let's seek the good in others. Forge unity and give a hand to the vulnerable. Thank you again for continuing that journey. And I will conclude my remark by saying that Ima and I Rwanda has been always central to our lives. It's not a foreign concept to us. Since the beginning of our nation, Ima and I was still part of our, our heritage. So as we conclude, and I conclude what I'm saying, I have to say that as people say Ima and I Rwanda, when you look at what is happening as a matter of fact, and this says, God spent the day in other countries and came back for, uh, to spend the night in the country. Right now we can add that Rwanda has a permanent residence in the country. He's not just going somewhere else, but he's also there during the day, during the evening, and he's here as you are praying for our leaders. Murakabaho, continue what you're doing. Continue to commend and recommend our leaders to God, the Almighty and take care and stay safe. Again, thank you for the organizers of this forum. Thank you, Ambassador, thank you. We truly appreciate you. Uh, we appreciate your support and we appreciate all that you do uh, for the Rwandan community. So thank you for joining us today. Um, I wanted to, before we conclude our, our event, we wanted to, excuse me, <coughs> we wanted to mention that the Rwanda Prayer Banquet, we've, we've been praying for Rwanda, we've been organizing, as we know that this, as I mentioned, this is the 19th annual event. Uh, each year we're trying to do more and more for our country and, and through uh, partnerships with other uh, nonprofit organizations. Uh, currently we have a water project that we are supporting. Uh, which you can read about on our website. And I hope that uh, if, if you have the time, this, since this year we were unable to raise money through tickets, uh, if you have time, if you have the resources, we know many people are struggling this year due to the pandemic, but if you have the resources, we hope that you can uh, donate through our website. I'll include the website link in our, in our chat here, um, but, but please do uh, support the Rwanda Prayer Banquet so that we continue can continue to organize similar events, can continue to support nonprofits and our, and our water projects specifically uh, back in Rwanda and, and continue to, to bring each of us together once a year to, to, uh, to pray for Rwanda and to share this moment of fellowship, which we believe is very important. Um, I would like to ask our, our dear friend, uh, Eric Munyamana to please uh, close us out with prayer. Uh, after that, we will play a video to, to uh, show some uh, Rwandan cultural dance uh, and some music, uh, but, but this will be my last time speaking. Um, so thank you again. This has been an honor for me to serve as your uh, master of ceremony today. Uh, my name again is Mutoni Karasani. I wish you all of the world, all of the, the Lord's blessings and, um, and, and a very fruitful uh, 2021. My, my heart goes out to each and every one of you and especially to our nation of Rwanda. Thank you. Eric? Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Kamutoni. Uh, uh, thank you for allowing me once again and giving me the privilege of uh, uh, closing us in prayer. Uh, it's gonna be very easy uh, because everything that needs to be said, prayers, teachings, comments has been done and has been said through the comments of the participants, through the wonderful, inspiring teaching of Pastor Rick Warren and Archbishop Ambanda, 
and the great message of our ambassador, Her Excellency Mathilde. So my prayer um, is from Ephesians 3, 20, 21, because there is nothing I can add on every prayer that has been said in this gathering. So this is my prayer from Ephesians 3, 20, 21. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or we imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. And this is a prayer for blessing for all of you, Rwandans and friends of Rwanda, wherever you are, and to the uh, organizers who put together a wonderful virtual event. This is, again, a prayer that I borrow from the Word of God, Numbers 6, 24-26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes, makes, his, makes his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for the privilege of praying.